Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. In our last video, you guys saw us add some nice decorative trees, flower beds, and stuff like that to our front yard. In the very beginning part of that video, you mentioned we got some fruit trees. So tell them what today's video is going to be about. Well, we are going to put those fruit trees in the ground and talk about a little bit more fruit we may have on the property. Plus an orchard update from the orchard we planted last year. Let's go. So last year, we got a really good deal on some bare root fruit trees from a, I don't, it was like a resale store. It wasn't a nursery. How much did we pay for those things? $10 a piece. Not bad. So we put those in the ground and then obviously if you follow our channel last year at all, you know, we were kind of distracted putting the house and setting it up and renovating it. So these trees were set out here and honestly forgotten about. How well or how bad did they do? Well, we did lose about five or six of them and when we got the maple trees this year we decided hey let's go ahead and get a couple more fruit trees and fill in some of the holes where the ones died yep so what did we get this year we got two peach trees and two apple trees so all in all do we just have apples and peaches now i, I don't remember we do also have two pear trees that did survive but the majority of what we have are apple trees cool so two peach two pear and, and the rest are apple Nice. We have a bag of what's called black cow. This is a soil amendment. It's cow manure, but it's not straight out of the cow. It's, <laughs> it's safe to use. We're gonna go ahead and put some of this down to the bottom of the hole we've dug. We dug these extra deep because we want soft, soft soil to let the roots go down, start forming really good deep roots. Add about a half a bag of this, water it really, really, really well, set the tree in, then we backfill. guys can tend to be really root bound so if you're able to break up the roots of the bottom with your hands hey, hey put that worm in there not too much but enough to where they realize they're no longer in a pot and we place it in a little too tall so we'll take some out back and forth back and forth you're just wanting to make mud pie yep There we go. We want to make sure we don't bury this below the ground. And absolutely critical with fruit trees, they're almost always grafted. You keep this above the ground. Otherwise, you're going to grow the original graft and that will die. So it looks like a pretty good height. Oh, my hat, my hat. 
Where'd all the soul go for this? There we go. Um, we need to stay in the tree up right. <laughs> Ooh, uh. It's a little crooked. You ready? Yeah. Sam's patting it's tree straightening. Whoa! Just put, put some foot on it. Put your foot in it. Just step your foot on it. Take that I'm tree. That is much better. Good. I'm not going to put yes. it there. Get and fall out this way. It looks like sand. It does, doesn't it? It's just dry clay. Yeah, it's not sand. The last one gets shortchanged. The cat past couple got shortchanged. Now it's been a little while since we planted the fruit trees in the ground, the ones that we got this year. And we are now out here, we are going to put a little bit of fruit tree fertilizer around the base of these to kind of help pep them up a little bit and give them a good watering because it has been a little bit dry recently. It just looks like dirt. It kind of does with some other stuff. That's a dirt. It actually does not stink though. Compared to some of the other fertilizers, that's pretty good. So for the size trees that we have, we only need to use about a cup per tree. And then it says to water thoroughly after we put it around the base of the tree. So we have over a dozen, so let's get going. It looks interesting. It does look weird. It kind of looks like a seed start mixture. Yeah, it's almost like sweet smelling. It's kind of weird. You guys smell that? It smells sweet? It kind of looks like goat feed or chicken feed inside of it too.
Well, we're all done with the orchard up here. We're gonna head over to the garden, but first, keeping with the fruit theme, let's show you how we planted our blueberries in the garden. Well, as you can see, I think the blueberries will be very happy in those containers. We do plan to put some irrigation in them as we do understand that it's going to get a lot drier in the pots than in the ground. We also wanted to point out our strawberry tower right here. This is a green stalk strawberry tower and I just went and got some bare roots strawberries that you can get like at a feed and seed store and put one in each little container and then they seem to be very happy and doing well what's great about this is the top container you can just fill it up with water and it just seeps all the way through down through the bottom and it's an easier way of watering it and I like how it looks we did have to strap it to the kind of greenhouse to a tea post because we do get really high winds here and we didn't want to lose the whole thing by it knocking over i did have extra strawberry bare root plants so we did just fill up some extra pots and put them in there if we get other planters later on or something like that we can replant them but that at least let me not lose them and they are growing happily as well. Some of them even have blooms on them and they've probably not even been planted a month yet. So I'm excited. The boys are excited to have fresh strawberries and blueberries and maybe not this year, but one day fruits, apples, peaches, and pears. There you have it guys. There is our orchard, our blueberries, and our strawberries. Yes. It is 
probably not needed to be pointed out, but I'll say it. We are very much not professional orchardologists or blueberry etitians. The orchard up there, we put up there because we got a good deal on the trees last year. Right. We wanted something, they survived, and we're just adding to them. We don't have grand ideas that we're going to have apple orchards and do anything amazing like that. It's just an area of our property that was open, available, and we're going to try and tend it as best we can without going overboard trying to put a ton of money and right. systems and stuff into it. We're just, I don't know, just trees in the yard, I guess. One thing that I really want to add to the yard too, to kind of go along with the fruit theme, sort of, is some pecan trees. But it is very hard to find pecan trees at an affordable price, especially locally. We did get pecan bare roots last year, but they all died before we could plant them. So they were just not good. We didn't have a place to put them because they do get so large, whereas the little apple trees and stuff like that, we know they're not going to get huge, and so it was easy to put them in a little orchard space. Yeah. But we have the space. We just didn't know where to put them at that point. Still don't. Yeah, because <laughs> when we got the bare root trees, we the house wasn't even here. We were we had a camper here staying on the weekends doing work, and so things weren't developed, and we didn't know what was going to go where. Now I think we kind of know where our house is. I think it'll stay there. I hope so. And the garden and mm -hmm. our workshop. So it's a little more set where everything is. Yeah, definitely. So it was nice that we are actually using our green stalk again. Yay! We have had that for three to four years, I mm -hmm. want to say. Uh, this is also a vertical garden planter that you can buy from Epic Gardening. The same company that we have our birdies beds, the large metal raised beds from. So there'll be a link to those down below, the birdie beds and the green stalk. The green stalk is perfect if you don't have a lot of space. You have a patio, a balcony, mm -hmm. an apartment, or you want to try vertical gardening. Hopefully it works out great for us. We've seen others have great success from it. In the first video we did many, many years back, didn't really work out well, but we just did it wrong. So hopefully we've done we it right. We live and learn. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You learn every day. So hopefully we've done this one right and it will live, thrive, and just be a great vertical staple in our garden here forward. And if you are interested in them too, and it sounds cool to you, you should check out some of the pictures online of like full garden type things that people do in these. So yes, if you only, if you're in a small trailer park, in an apartment, or anything like small, mm -hmm. that is like the way to go. Yeah, or if you rent your space and your landlord won't yeah. let you destroy, destroy a yard with a garden, something like that works out great, I it would does. think for sure. Well guys, thanks for coming along as we finished up some of the stuff with the orchard and you got to see some of our fruits and berries. And our DIY planters to match the birdies. Yes. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. It just went up my nose. <laughs> well guys, thanks for coming along as you got to see our... Oh, they saw that. Yep. Nice. What a lady. <laughs> did you get the lens? <laughs> did we do an intro? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We we're up at the road. People driving by looking at us. It's funny. really good. <laughs> yep. They're, the bugs are in my beard. Oh, I know, honey. They're... Are they in your beard too? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just everywhere. Oh, it's in my eye. Ew, you're sweaty. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> it's You've been married to me 20 years. You know what happens. Almost 20. Oh, gosh, I'm crawling.